Hey, Flow Racing. It is Courtney Enders. We are here with the very only exclusive drag racing podcast on Flow Racing. A lot of you go in circles. Around here, we go straight. And we have a very special show for Right Off Track today. We're not going to have a guest on here. We're not going to have a highfalutin top fuel dragster champion or a five-time pro stock champ. Low key brag there. Um, we're going to do something a little bit different today, and we're going to have a conversational piece. I've had so many topics and so many ideas that I want to cover and let you, the flow racing audience, get to know drag racing on a different level. And I thought, what better way to do that than bring the man, the myth, the legend, Jason, Mr. All Access, Mr. Mellow Yellow, Mr. Camping World, Mr. Low Zone. What other names you have? I don't know. You know him. You love him. He plays the tunes at the racetrack at the NHRA. Jason Logan, my co-host for the day. Jason Logan, what the heck is up on this beautiful Friday? Uh, I'm getting ready to, you know, get out to the track, have some fun, you know, getting ready to go into the races. First things first, if people watching this, so this is a flow racing podcast. I am flow drag racing, but this is essentially a flow racing podcast and drag racing is pretty new to flow racing here. So some people may not know you. In the drag racing world, you're the guy. Everybody knows you. They yell at you. They tell you to stop playing stupid music. They tell you to throw them t-shirts, all that. But before we get started and dive into drag racing, let the Flow Racing audience know kind of your background, how you came into this situation, and was it your love for drag racing or was it your love for being a raging idiot? Uh, yeah, my name is Jason Logan. Hi. Hi. I live in Orlando, Florida. I love long walks on the beach and things of that nature. I'm an Aquarius. Um, no, I, uh, I am, uh, I've been doing this. I was telling somebody the other day, I go, I've been throwing out t-shirts and giving people free stuff at sporting events more than I've been alive, more, more years than I, you know, half of my life doing this. Um, I used to work for a company called Sports Magic Team uh, back in the day. Uh, well, if you go to any major league sport, basketball, hockey, baseball, they all have an entertainment team that runs around and, you know, shoots hot dogs out of T-shirt guns. And there's a T-shirt gun there. Well, in Orlando, we started this back in like 1990. We're the ones that created that well, it should be. I'm, I was part of like a 25 man team, men and women. Uh, from all backgrounds, doctors, lawyers, entertainers at Disney and uh, Universal. And we just kind of got to go to every major sporting event. We, uh, I lived through the Orlando Magic Heyday with Shaq and Penny and uh, Michael Ooh. Jordan. Um, we've been, I've been to like every All Star game, I've been to Super Bowls, hockey, baseball. Uh, you name it, just throwing stuff at people, shooting shirts, making people happy. It, we were the play between the plays. Courtney. So yeah, that was our catchphrase. So uh back in 1995 was my first real drag race that I've ever been to. And it I was, was nine years old. Yeah, it was in Bandemir. And uh, I was baptized by Nitro then. And it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. A, a, a nice young man named Jim Trace saw what we were doing someplace and brought us out. And uh, we had four people out there at one point in time and we'd run up and down. People would throw balls. We had a, on our little side by side, we had a, a, a racing slick right in the front and we called the whole shot and we'd throw a ball up in the stands and people would throw. Yeah, exactly. People would throw the ball back and they would try and throw it in the tire. It was just dumb stuff like that. And that has all evolved into, Hey, let's give that idiot a microphone. Let's let him play games along the fence line. And let's let this guy, you know, hype the crowd up and let's let these guys do this and let's shoot shirts and let's do, and it's just evolved into, uh, after the pandemic, um, I wasn't out there because, you know, obviously social distancing and people don't want to give, you know, Hey, (laughs) here's a shirt. Enjoy yourself. (laughs) You didn't want to do all that. So, um last season uh, they brought me back out in a uh in a different role uh still doing a little bit of the same thing but i am now the uh in venue dj for uh for the for the races so in any time you hear music being played whether you like it or not it's me and by the way i don't think i'm leaving anytime soon it seems to be no. going very well no and you've kind of evolved through this so i mentioned in your little intro there mr all access mr camping world mr mellow yellow all the things people kind of dubbed you this because whatever shirt whatever sponsor we have right you're the guy that they hear you're the guy that they see 
But these days, I'm going to jump forward a little bit. These days, you're doing a little bit different. You're the personality hire. We all know that. Everybody loves you for your personality. But now they're throwing you up on the stage in the pits at Nitro Alley. They're having you do um, interviews, rapid fire stuff. We've got an interview scheduled with my sister this weekend for you up there. What is your favorite location for you to be? Is it on the fence with the fans? Is it up in the state or up in the uh, on the stage for Nitro Alley? What's your what's your favorite vibe? Um, I don't. It really depends on each track. Like uh, two weeks ago in Norwalk, where I was on the track side, I mean, it's just a lot of times it's verbal abuse. And it's just like, <laughs> why are you yelling at me? I'm just here doing a thing that, you know, I take time out of my life and my family to come try and entertain you guys. And uh, sometimes you may not like, I mean, I played five songs in Norwalk and two of them might have been rock songs. Two of them might have been a pop song. And I don't know, whatever the random one. And some guy, you are the worst. You're the worst that well, I'm like my guy at five songs in and you already hate me. Okay, cool. He goes, play more rock and roll, play more mar- rock and roll for the guy comes back at the end of the day. That's the worst. Why does drag racing even need abuse? I'm like, uh, okay, take care. But then you go to the nitro alley stage and people are like, Oh my gosh, can we get a picture with you? Can we do this? Can we do that? You're so much fun. And I, I might, I mean, Listen, I I'm not for everybody. I'm not everyone's cup of tea, Courtney. You're not yes, everyone's you cup are. of tea. <laughs> we, you and I, are polarizing people, Courtney. We get it at the races, but we try. We're all we're there to do is entertain. So to answer your question, uh, it's kind of it's a mix. I like being on the Nitro Alley stage because I get to you know my set my little segment up there is uh, ten questions with Jason. We used to do that at pre race back in the day, and it was more this or that. But man, I get involved. Like I had Chase Van Zant and uh, Norwalk. And uh, we were we just started talking and I asked him, I go, hey, you got a girlfriend? Because it's just really me because I'm trying to bring people up that I don't know. I mean, obviously, I know Erica, so her questions are going to be a little different um, this weekend. But uh, yeah, it, I just I, I get into it. And man, Chase Van Zandt opened up and said, hey, listen, if you're at a wedding, I go or any event, what song is going to be the one that gets you on the dance floor? I go, we need I need the song that's going to get Chase up, shaking his butt. And he said, what did he say? He said, oh, Fergalicious. What? I was like, Chase Van Zandt, that's your new song, bro. Don't even think about getting the Too Fast, Too Tasty because you're getting Fergalicious out the gate every single time. It's kind of so. cool because you do get to know these drivers and you've been out here a long time. Yeah. A lot of us, now there's there's clicks, there's circles and stuff and everybody knows you're my dog. We are in a, we are in a little click together, but you have a unique situation and an opportunity to get to know these people But my favorite part about your job is you get to expose them. So you become friends with these people. You learn things about. And I can't wait to hear my sister's (laughs) questions this weekend, because for those of you watching, Jason Logan and I are legitimately you're one of my best friends. We talk, we chat like I go look for you at the racetrack. We are during COVID. I feel like our relationship took to the next level and we um, we became very close. And so via that. You have some inside information on my sister, Aaron Stanfield, Troy Coughlin and stuff. But as we can see in your background there, these drivers, God, they're just so rigid and uncomfortable around you. How cool is that, that you get to just step into this sport, whether you liked it or not, before you did it and booty bump with Brittany Force? Well, you know, like you're right. There are clicks and there are people that you vibe with more than others. Um, like that picture of me and Brittany right there might be one of my favorite pictures of drag racing history all time. Um, because she got up there and we were, it was her birthday or no, she was number one qualifier. I don't know what it was, but same, same. They, yeah, we start making, uh, they start playing music and I just start dancing. She got right into it. Honestly. And all the time I've been out there, I might've maybe had five conversations with Brittany force. She's just intimidating to me. And I don't go over into the force pits at all. Um, yeah. It's the, scary over there. Yeah, Austin Proc was my first uh, 10 questions guy. I mean, I, I, Robert Height, we're all good, but they, dude, it's just intimidating over there. I don't, I listen, they're all business. You know, your guys' pits at the elite pit, they, you know, hey, how's it going? You know, everybody's still having fun while doing their business. Um, Antron Brown, who you had on a couple of weeks ago, he's always a good time. We were over there and people wanted to sign. Uh, he was signing autographs for people, and this little girl was all nervous and she didn't want to go get an autograph. And I'm like, hey, come on, I'll walk you right up there. This joker signed my forehead. He's like, he's like no, Antron Brown. Oh, Antron. Antron. Antron's like, he's like, hey, you know, giving the little girl an autograph. He goes, oh, you want an autograph too? And he made a whole scene about it. Here, come here, let me autograph. He autographed my forehead. I go, really, Antron? 
Really? Thanks, he's, man. He's the people's people. He is. I love it. it and that's what's so great about uh, NHRA drag racing. And not only is, uh, you know, is the racing great and all that stuff, but, you know, every we always say this at the track. Every ticket is a pit pass. You, I mean, try and go and talk to Kevin Harvick or, you know, uh, Chase Elliott at a, Na- a NASCAR race. You're not going to catch them. I've never seen white people walk so fast in my life as a, <laughs> an H- or as a NASCAR driver leaving his pit, going to his camper. And I'm like, well, I've never seen I, that's setting land speed records. You say Bolt, look out because these guys are just moving and shaking. But all of our drivers will definitely spend time with you, say hello, you know, unless they're like totally slammed and busy, like on Sundays, you know, trying to make it to the next round. But on Friday, Saturday, man, they'll, they'll, if, if they have the time, they will give you all the time in the world. Which We're going to dive into that later. I have some, okay. some hot topics that I want to talk about. This is why okay. I wanted you on here because yes, I want to get the flow racing and the NHRA and PDRA audience kind of a little insight to to what we do so we're going to talk about some fan engagement here in a little bit but before we do you're kind of moving and grooving in a different direction now you're getting comfortable out there you're signing autographs kissing babies people know who you are they know your voice you're on nhra.tv you're kind of everywhere but you have started a new podcast yourself so i want to give you a little platform here because this is not a one-stop shop. You do not have to just watch one podcast. It doesn't have to be the Flow Racing one. We've got Shake and Bake. We've got the West Buck Show. We, during COVID, we had the Caruso Show. We had dub, still the WFO Show. A ton of these shows, but uh, give yourself a little love here on a platform and, and boast your podcast. Well, our podcast, myself and Jason Galvin, uh, two of the uh, other announcers, uh, Joe Costello uh, has uh, Alan Reinhardt on his podcast, his uh, WFO, and, and Jason and I, we share rooms. And, uh, you know, as we lay in bed, getting ready, turning off the lights Ooh. and we turned the TV off and little pillow talk action, like, hey, Jason, you want to start a podcast? He goes, yeah, you want to start a podcast? Right, let's do a podcast. So that was like all last season. And now all of a sudden we, we were like, all right, let's do one. So our podcast is called Life's a Drag. And uh, we come at it from a different angle than the West Buck show or the you know WFO show where it's all like drag racing. It's all you know, all business, all business. It's like, let's get down. Let's meet the winners. Let's bring the, those guys up. Jason and I come at it from a different angle. Like, Hey, we're here. And this is what we just did this weekend uh, off the track. We talk a little bit of drag racing, but we'll bring a guest on, but we've all, we've had PR agents on. Uh, we've had, uh, we've had a couple drivers on, but it's, we just talk about the behind the scenes stuff, stuff that, you know, you know, like, why do you do it that way? Why is it? Why? Why? Why do we do pre-race at this time? And what's going on? And, you know, without giving up too much detail, uh, you know, we, we don't want to get too behind the scenes. But uh, we, we just talk about some fun stuff that happens. Like one weekend, uh, we went uh, candle pin bowling in, in uh, you know, when it was raining in New Hampshire. It was like, what are we going to do? And, well, you know, we proceeded to, you know, I sucked at candle pin bowling. We talked about it. I walk outside and. One of uh, Ali Bland, one of the marketing agencies, go, Hey, Jason, jump up and click your heels. And I'm like, Okay. Well, I used to be an athlete, not anymore. I jumped up and just immediately fell on the ground. It was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Oh and I'm like gosh. writhing in pain on the on the ground. And they're, they've got video of it. And they're all just pointing their fingers like, hey, Look at you, you big dummy. So, you know, just dumb things like that. But, you know, we kind of give a little insight. Like we had, uh, we had some timing uh, issues one uh, race, and um, we brought in the guy who uh, runs the timing system. So we talked about that. Had had uh, you know talked showed people how the scoring boards work in the tower. So um, just trying to come at it from a different angle, more entertainment uh, than you know the nuts and bolts of drag racing. I mean, we'll get into that a little bit, but we 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 just try to make it more fun than you know nerdy. Well, that's that's y'all's job. Air compressor. Yeah, pressure. it's the Jason Squared show, but I feel like we're in a place that we're in now. It's 2023. Everybody's got a podcast, but there's so many different areas of each sport um, that I feel like that people are into or need to cover. You know, we've got fans that are in there because they know everything about every car. We've got fans in there because they watched the Driving Force reality TV show, and that's all they know. We have fans that only watched right off track or right. Oh, see what I did there? Right on track. I saw that. I and saw that's that. all that they know. But COVID kind of did this. Like, I feel like COVID was a huge change. You had give, give us a little insight on what you did. I'm going to make you throw the celebrity gauntlet out here because let's be real. That's probably the reason I'm your friend because I'm still trying to meet NSYNC. (laughs) So uh, in Orlando, everybody knows a member of NSYNC. 
or Backstreet Boys. Everybody, it just happens. Um, and uh, I'm friends, really good friends with Joey Fatone uh, from NSYNC. He might be the fifth member of NSYNC, but guess what? But he's, he's still a member. He was a member. And uh, during the pandemic, uh, I, it, it, my real job is I'm a, D, a, a corporate and social DJ at MC. So somebody said, hey, listen, you need to do something during the pandemic to keep your name out there. And I kept watching all these DJs putting their DJ sets up on stage. I'm like, that's not that's not what I really do. So I you know, one of the my favorite games at uh, NHRA before we stopped doing it because the fun police got out there and said we can't do this one anymore <laughs> is uh, the is the uh, we call it the T-shirt or TV theme song T-shirt trivia game. We tried to make it as more convoluted than what it was. But we play TV theme songs and you guess them, you get three right out of five, you win a T-shirt. Simple, super easy. But, you know, uh, we so I did that online uh, on Facebook Live. And uh, Joey Fatone was watching. He's like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? So I explained to him, he goes, oh, my God, we need to make this a show. So during the pandemic, we had like probably 80, 90 shows we did. And we had like every C-list celebrity. Uh, I mean, we had some bigger celebrities. We had like Guy Fieri on. Uh, didn't have boy, me. We didn't have you, which I could have had you on. Uh, I tried to get your our friend Katie Olson on to play with Boys to Men. And Boys to Men, did, she was like, oh, I better not do that one. Um because we did uh, black or white. Who's singing it? Is it a black artist or a white artist singing? For, uh, uh, she's she's PC. I'm not. Yeah, I know. you would have been good. You would have been good. <laughs> but we've had we had people from Broadway, uh, YouTube, uh, you know, um, influencers on. We had Real Housewives on. We had Snooki on. We had we had just everybody that was just locked down. And that's what that's it, it, there during the pandemic. That's what happened. People had nothing to do. Um, like you said, like we were just talking before the show, you, you and the shake and bake show, what, what are you going to do on a Tuesday night? You said drink with us. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happened during the pandemic. And we would just play, I would play a, a song and we'd bring fans on. We, and the guests, and it was great because the show evolved from the game show aspect of me playing uh, music to just actually having really good conversations with these uh, celebrities and just getting to know them. Um, it, it was, it was it was a lot of fun. And I, I was going back looking at some of these shows because I needed to pull something for something that we were doing just in a private whatever. And uh, I was like, man, that show was really good. I go, we just got down to the nitty gritty and just had a just like with it with uh, you and the shake and bake guys. It, it, it's just the fun of just talking trash. And just having fun. You, know, you can bring guests on all day long, but when you have your core group of friends and you're entertaining each other, you couldn't get together. You couldn't go, you know, to a restaurant and you know have a couple of drinks. So we did it on Zoom, and it was just. I look back at those things and I'm like, that was really good. So that's kind of what we're trying to do with our Life's a Drag podcast because Jason and I see each other every weekend, and you know, we, he's just like, and it, it just turns into a uh, podcast. Save it for the podcast. So. It's, I feel uh, like sometimes fun. I look back at those, like the Caruso show. That was that was one in the drag racing space that I feel was one of the first ones. It was just a massive hangout. At one point, we had like 15 people on StreamYard just drinking. And I remember yeah. there was this one in particular <laughs> where I'm like, I wish I could take it off the internet. But you almost forgot that you were putting this out there for the world to see because it was like, you're hanging out with your friends and you're just pressing record. I'm sitting on my kitchen counter legs up just tossing them back talking right. shit and i'm like that was on the internet <laughs> that's out there it lives forever like joe costello's uh when he would do his holiday happy hour stuff you and i would get on there and just kind of take over and well, yeah that's what we do yeah joe is trying to be a serious uh broadcaster and try and you know rain us now nah, dude here comes angie smith what angie smith what you know and then it just it just turned into you and i taking over his show which is probably why he doesn't have a, another one of these happy hour shows with us on anymore, but whatever. I feel like we did get the boot from there, but now you've got your own. I've got my own and now we're right. doing mashups. So we do what we want. Here we are. Okay. I want to get into, you know, enough about Jason. Now you can see his personality. He is no holds bar. I want to get into some oh, serious yeah. topics here. Are you crying? Serious. Already? Yeah, I'm crying. I'm very upset. Okay. Dude, I had to get, well, I, I, I've, I'm gotten old Courtney. Like I don't really need these glasses, but you look, you look fuzzy. And my eyes will adjust, but then I put these on and it turns. You into look sophisticated. I've told you, I like the the kind of salt and pepper scruff. I like the glasses. You're just, you're aging so delicately. I try. I got a haircut yesterday for the, for the big weekend. So we're all good. We're all good. Anywho. See, this is what happens. We just go off on <laughs> tangents. 
<laughs> I want to talk about some things that I don't know how to address to the drag racing world. And I needed somebody to bounce these off of. So we're going to do about three or four hot topics here. Okay. The first one is a steamy one. I want to talk scammers. I want to oh. talk internet scammers. So for those of you who have brains and don't live under rocks, these stars, whether it's NASCAR, whether it's late model, whether it's drag racing, whether it's gosh dang Jennifer Aniston, I don't care. They have these pages, these social media pages. The blue check mark was made to avoid this, but now you can buy the blue check mark and all this other happy horse shit, yeah. which is crazy. And I've been accused of buying mine. I didn't buy mine. Anyway, um, scammers are out there and they are heavy, heavy, heavy. They will make these accounts, fake accounts, reach out to people, say, are you my sweet, adorable racing fan? Please message me. And it progresses in some cases, and I'm glad you have, you're already laughing. I'm glad you have Brittany Force up on the screen because in our world, I feel like Erica Anders and Brittany Force are really just getting it bad in this point. So yeah. I can only speak from my end and then I'm going to get your opinion of it. My sister has about 4,800 scammers a day that make these accounts. Erica Anders, 8675309. Erica dot real profile, Erica dot private, right. all these things. And they write these people. And people will get so far hooked because they want to believe that Eric Anders or Brittany Force wants to reach out to them. So right. they'll talk for a couple of days. I'm going to let you give your, your testimony here in a minute of your fun conversation with Erica Anders. But it's getting to the point to where these people are scamming money. They're yeah. getting, you can buy a... a all access pass for $800 a year. You can come to the shop. We'll give you tickets. We'll send you t-shirts. They think yep. that it's real. So they send money. Then once they get them hooked, then it's like, oh, I've Erica Ender says, I've fallen in love with you. And I want you to be my long distance fiance. And these people are truly, truly getting scammed. We've had to break hearts in person, <laughs> online. Of people I've who seen it. They're engaged to these people. So Give us your firsthand experience of your Erica Enders scam. Well, so I listen again during the pandemic, I had nothing to do. I, I still almost have nothing. I was to gonna do say, you races. still don't. Yeah, well, and if you like, I just had th 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 these are the level, this isn't even the, the scammer about Erica, but like, here's some lady, uh, yesterday. Hey, um, good morning. Are you a trainer from Orange Theory Fitness LA? I don't know if you can <laughs> see this lady, but there, that, that's the thing, right? She sends this, right? And I said, no. Oh, my God. Sorry. I just realized I mistyped the area code. Are you from Florida area? Yes. And then she just goes on. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't have time for that one. But that's what happened with Erica Enders. It's like, hey, Ray, you know, hey, thanks for being a race fan. Just as simple as that. And, I, and of course, I see it's Erica dot Enders dot you know, e whatever it is. And I'm Real like, going, page. yeah. And I was like, okay. Um, Hey Erica, what's up? Everything good. Think not knowing it wasn't her yet, but then as the conversation progressed, I'm like going, oh, okay, first off you, you, you know, Eric, you, you're her sister. She doesn't know how to work the phone, let alone no. the internet. So that's where that's, you know, red flag. Number one, number two is like, Hey, listen, uh, because you're such a great fan, would you like to be part of my, uh, you know, elite, you know, you can get VIP access, the whole thing. So for 850 bucks, I got to go in the elite pit hospitality. So then I'm like, okay, now it's, now I see what's going on. Let me, Hey, what do I get for the all access pass? Oh, you get the hospitality. Do I get, do I get food? Who's cooking? Who's the chef? Uh, you know, do I get to, you know, like, yeah. And if you have questions about, you know, the way the car's running or you, you have some input, you can definitely talk to my crew chief. And I go, Oh, <laughs> who is it? Is it chase or is it Richard? I go, you think Richard, let me, you know, work the clutch and do I, and so I'm now going on and on and on. And then it got to the point where I'm like, um, Eric, are you single? Now I know what's going on. I know the whole deal. And so now he's and, sending us screenshots. Too, oh yeah. Right? I, I'm now screenshotting involved. Erica and Courtney. Hey, are you single? Can I go if, if I'm nice, can we go on a date? And you know, then it turned into, of course we can, sweetie. What do you, you know, what kind of, I was like, this is the biggest scam ever. And then, you know, after every five or six, are you going to send the 850 bucks? Are you, are you, I go, yeah, just let me know where to send it. I definitely want to. I go, in fact, I'm going to be out there this weekend. We'll talk about it then. After I see what the setup is, I'll, it, it's just a big old scam. And I've gotten them from Brittany too. I've gotten them from Leah. 
I've gotten them from, you know, all these people that are just like, hey, just spend your money and you can have tickets to all the races you want to come to. Now, I just had to get tickets for this weekend for Sunday. And you talk about trying to jump through hoops and set them on fire. Oh, yeah, the you can't get yeah. tickets. Yeah, yeah, there's no tickets. So, yeah, just buyer beware. And like I've seen, I saw you guys have to break some 65 year old man's heart in the pits who showed up with a ring and had, you know, it was like, I, I, I want to see Erica. And she was like, no, I'm not going out there. And you, you had to go tell, dude, this is a scam. She does not. And it was like, it, he was I, so I, sad. I, yeah. And we're not doing this. We're not, I don't, I didn't want to bring this up. I'm not making fun of these people, but it does get to a point where you've got to turn on your noggin and really think about what's going on. But one of the reasons I wanted to bring this up was just because I feel like every single day, I have to post something on her page because we're getting legal stuff sent to us. You know, people right. have spent tens of thousands of dollars um, to rescue <laughs> Erica from this. And and I don't know how to go about it. I don't know how to fix it. I don't really know how to address it. I've got it pinned on Erica's Facebook page. You know, this is our only page. We will never have another page. Right. But I don't really know what the solution is. And nobody's really talking about it. And Amanda Busick and I, after we had to take that man away, he, guys, again, not making fun. Sad. But it was man, sad. It was sad. He brought a ring. He thought he had been talking to Erica. He flagged me down and he said, hey, Courtney, it's me, whatever his name was. And I'm like, Hey, hey. <laughs> whatever your name is. And he's like, we talked this morning. Well, he had trouble getting into the gate because these people are the scammers are spending time making fake tickets, spending time communicating. That man spent weeks talking to you on that yeah. deal. And I don't understand. I know they're getting money out of it, but I don't understand how the effort is worth whatever they're getting out of it. And you're messing with these people's heads. And Amanda Busick and I talked about it last year and, and maybe thought about doing some kind of segment on it to bring awareness to it, but there is no fix to it. And, and I don't yeah. really know how to go about it. And so except for doing things like this and talking about it online to where you've got to be vigilant and you've got to know that these drivers, like I know Brittany got off social media. She took her Instagram and her real Facebook off. Doesn't even have a Facebook page page right. anymore. It just all goes through the John Force page because we're we're getting to the point where we're feeling responsible for this because we've had people show up at the elite shop. Hey, I'm here to cash in my ticket to Willy Wonka land, right? Like, holy crap, we you're right there in front of us. And if this most of them are understanding and they realize they were vulnerable and then they end up, you know, we'll give them tickets to the race or whatnot. But some of them blame us and there's not a lot we can do. And we're working with NHRA legal on a couple of these things. But I just want to bring a little bit of awareness and kind of give fans pointers of blue check mark. You got to reach out to these blue right. check marks. So what do you think that the cure is? Well, I mean, it's just people see. And again, going back to as long as I've been doing this and we, we would have uh, with sports management, we would have training camp. And we'd bring people from all over the country to that were with our satellite teams. We and we'd sit them down and we're like, "Listen, they're not cheering for you. They're cheering for a T-shirt. Don't <laughs> don't get it. Don't get it messed up. They're, they're cheering for a T-shirt. They 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 all gonna they're all gonna think you know Michael Jordan because you are inside the ropes. And this I mean, it happens. You it happens to me because you're inside the ropes, and everybody is just going to. And because they have such great access, because they have, you know, they can see you. And I mean, Erica spends a, a ton of time with her fans. And I, and there are weekends where I'm over there and I'd like, I rescue her because she's just in a conversation with people that just, it's like, I mean, Stucking when I go to the life out of you. Yeah. And I'm like, Hey, Erica, I need to talk. Okay. And she's, Oh my God. Thank you. You just see it in her face. And if you're not there to police or her guys are doing something else, somebody's got to, and they all get to that point. Like when I do, uh, I host all the autograph sessions out there, the too fast, too tasty, the Suzuki, uh, pro stock motorcycle ones. Um, I tell people flat out, I go, these are celebrity. And I say it jokingly, but I go, these are celebrities. They have things to do. They don't want to hear about how you and your grandpappy built some sand rail back in 1973. And you, you raced it all, get your autograph and move along. And, and, and I'm just like, ah, I'm just joking there. And Eddie but Craywick, no, I'm not. Eddie Craywick to this day, he he, thought, he just, he goes, you can tell him, you're going to tell him. I go, I go, do not make eye contact with Eddie Craywick. He is very famous. He has won world championships. And, you know, so it's, 
I, I and I say it tongue in cheek and okay, ha 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 ha, and people still do it, but I've said it out loud. Don't they just have things to do? And be, again, because of all that access, they just feel and everyone's so nice and everyone, all the drivers are super appreciative of of any fan that they have. And uh, so I guess I mean you like you said, you have to be vigilant to what you're doing. Why would you give anybody? 850 bucks because you i mean just go to nhra.com and see how much tickets cost there's no way you're getting tickets for 850 bucks at whatever race you're going to and if you're only going to one race why would you spend 850 bucks for an all-access pass to, to get hospitality someplace and right. just for the off chance to meet them you're gonna meet them with your 65 five dollar ticket there are everywhere. and you you bring me perfectly into my next hot topic here we are the most accessible motorsport on the planet Period. Like you said, you can't just walk right up to Kyle Larson. You can if you have a hot pass, but like, right. gosh dang, when we were invited from by NASCAR for Erica to go to the St. Louis race, like it still was tough to get places that we had all the access in the world. So there's this, there's this image that because you're able to be up at the pit and stand at the ropes and watch them work that you can just scream at them. And again, guys, we love the fans. The fans pay our freaking salaries. Right. They buy our shirts. It's incredible. We love to put on a show for you. But at the end of the day, today's podcast is an educational piece for fans. <laughs> we are here to put on a show for you. And while you are going to get that access and things, I feel like there's some pit etiquette we want to talk about here. And again, this is just Courtney Anders and Jason Logan talking here. We don't really know anything, right? We're just here. Nothing. Flies on the wall. And I am I am responsible for the mental capacity of my drivers. I've got the team elite pit over there. And so a big part of my job is to make sure that everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. They are where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be. And so we've got autograph sessions that we've got to be at at 1230. We've got driver intros that we've got to be at at 10 o'clock. And when we've got drivers that are there, this is their job. We say this is Tuesday at a cubicle. In, your, in the normal person's world, Saturday morning is Tuesday at a cubicle and you've got Erica or Brittany or Leah wrenching on a car and the fans are there at the ropes five feet away. They're able to watch, which is incredible. I stood behind the ropes for 20 years before we were allowed on the other side and I loved it. And we've got this precedence, I think, that because we are putting on this show and because we are accessible like we are, that people can just say and do whatever they want. And we get a lot of hate mail. I read all the comments and I do all the all the emails because for the same reason as Brittany, Erica's gotten off personal social media so she doesn't accidentally get engaged again. Um, and we get a lot of shit for, I was over at your pit for 45 minutes and Erica was working on the car or Erica was eating lunch and she never came to the ropes. We do go to the ropes and there's kind of a system to it. And that's why I wanted to bring this up. And, and when we're done talking about the banter of it, we'll get to the system of it. But you've been there when people are like, Carter, get Erica. Or like she's knee deep underneath the race car and they're like grabbing her foot. Hey, hey, sign this for my kids. Sign my kid's belly. These people are working. What's your take on this as, as a fan standing there getting the access they're getting and like screaming at these people? Um, again, we love the fans. <laughs> we love okay, the fans. Let's continue to throw that out there. But some of them, not all of them, some of them feel entitled. I paid seventy five dollars, and uh, at times two, and I'm out here. Oh, we, I, I deserve an autograph, and I better get my face time with Antron Brown, and I better get if John Force doesn't shake my hand, I'm gonna be pissed. That's just the they. If I don't get a T-shirt, dude, I have. There's 25,000 people here. I have 72 for the weekend. Guess what? Somebody's not getting a T-shirt. I, pro I promise I will shoot T-shirts at, at, at some point in time. But somebody's, but people get upset. I've, I've had people just come up and just grab T-shirts out of the uh, back of our side-by-side. -side. I'm like, where are you going? At what point in time do you think that's okay to just to come up and steal stuff? I'm like, okay. Yeah, I paid my money. I'm getting it. Okay. Keep drinking. Don't get a ticket on the way home. You know, but also do keep buying your beers from the facilities. We love it. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, they, they, they feel entitled, and you know, I don't know. Listen, I we used to do uh, the the uh, membership tent, and I'd I'd walk in there, and there'd be people 
just, you know, happy to be underneath shade. And I, and I'd get on the microphone and they do autograph, you know, our interviews and stuff. I got a microphone. Uh, hey, uh, how many people love drag racing? Yeah, we love drag racing. It's the best. Okay, cool. How many, uh, how many people come to all the races? Like, uh, the rest of us do no one, you know, None. there's like two people they, they come to two or three. I go, how many people have NHRA.TV? Oh, I'm not paying for that. Why would I pay for that? I'm like, it's a hundred dollars for the whole year. Why would you not? You love drag racing. Why would you not see it at, at every race? I was like, okay, so that, and I get it. People have a finite amount of money that they can spend on their race and they want to see their favorite driver and they want to see their stars. So I, I mean, I understand the entitlement aspect of it, but at the same time, it, I mean, I've been around celebrity. I've been around, you know, red carpets. I've, you know, like what, let's name drop again. Joey Fatone goes to a, a red carpet. They were opening a hard rock uh, cafe in Tampa. Hey, come on, let's all go. Let's all go. We all know, as part of Joey's entourage, that you walk your ass to the end of the red carpet and you sit there and you wait. It ain't your show. You wait for Joey to, hi, how you doing? Ha, 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 ha. Well, we had one of our buddies that didn't get the concept. And he's up there <laughs> mean mugging. And, and we're like, dude, what are you doing? Come down here. This, is, this gives everybody a bad name, especially Joey. You can't do that. That's not your deal. So we all just go and we wait and then we have a good time in our VIP section. But that and some people just don't have that capacity or understanding, you know, because Antron's such a great guy, because Robert right. Hunt's such a cool dude. They're all they're like, oh, well, he's my best friend. We're buddies. We we can talk to people. And man, the conversations I get into out there that I'm just like, oh, okay, cool. And you have to shake your head. Hi, hand, nice to you. And again. I love the fact that people appreciate what I do out there and signing an autograph to me is still hilarious. Like at the Suzuki autograph session, every time I sign an autograph this past week in Norwalk or two weeks in Norwalk, I'd be like, Hey, Kelly Klontz, look, I'm signing another autograph. <laughs> Gay Herrera, look, your boy signing autographs. And it's just like, they're like, you're such an idiot. I go, because it's, I, that's I, why I, people love you. Because, but I'm not that guy that needs to be signing autographs. Gage Herrera, you know, Angie Smith, Max Smith, those people should be signing. I'm just an idiot on the sidelines. But they, people get to touch you, they get to feel you, they get to talk with you. So, I mean, I get it. It's a fine line. Uh, but, you know, sometimes, I mean, there's, there's always going to be a bad apple in every crowd that's just going to, I mean, people send emails to Alan uh, Reinhardt about me. And I'm like, and he forwards them to me. He goes, you got a new fan? And I'm just like, okay. I, but they, what they don't understand is I have your email now. I will, if it gets bad enough, I will email you back and respond to the email that you said. Some guy said, hey, you look like a bum with that beard. And he spelled bum, B-U-M-B. I go, dude. <laughs> Bumby. Stop. I go. So, so maybe the fix is, you know, we've, we have to address the fact that we've almost presented ourselves like a zoo. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I, Dion and I went to the zoo the other day and it was awesome. And, and I got weird because I'm like, oh, my God, this is us at the racetrack. And again, I don't do anything cool. I take pictures of cars. I manage drivers. Right. I do top end interviews and stuff, but it's essentially a zoo. And sometimes I stand on the racetrack and I look up at the 30,000 people and I'm like, we're we're in a fishbowl and people right. are literally just watching us work. And so the reason I brought this up as one of our hot topics is I don't want the fans to leave upset. I don't want to get the email saying I waited outside Erica Anders pit for an hour and she never came around. She's such a bitch, whatever. There's got to be a way that we can structure this. And I know Alexis DeJoria has tried one thing where she puts a sign outside of her pit and says, I'm going to be signing autographs at 1130 or 30 minutes after Q1 or whatever. Right. And I talked to them about it because I want to fix this problem for the elite motorsports pit. And apparently that was worse than ever because if the round runs late or if Alexis has to go, she's number one qualifier and has to go up to the tower. Like there's things these drivers have to do as their Tuesday in a cubicle as their job. Right. And so I want to work with the fans and figure out a way to do that. But I think that what you're doing is a big part of this because we're we're bringing these drivers to the top eliminator club. Um, Loki Flex here, my sister and I both have an autograph session at the top eliminator club nice. Saturday at twelve thirty in Denver. Um, but there's the Nitro Alley where you do the too fast, too tasty autograph session, the motorcycle one, the walk through the pit. I don't even know if they still do that, but no. I think that we've got to collectively work together to schedule more things to 
have these drivers have a scheduled allotment of where they're supposed to be so that they can sit down in their pit and eat, or they can go sit up in the lounge and relax for a minute because I've, I'm going to out myself here. If Erica was out at the ropes for an hour, it's hot y'all. She's got her fire suit on. She's talking to everybody. Erica loves talking to the fans because we were a fan, but every little conversation you have takes a little sliver of your soul. And these drivers are racing. And on Sunday, yeah. my drivers don't spend a lot of time at the ropes because they go up in the lounge 20 minutes before they race to get in the zone. Girls got to eat. Girls got to pee. Girls got to call her dad. Like there's things going on. And so I think that what you guys are doing in the midway is a great way to kind of wrangle this. But I wanted to just bring it up just because to give an awareness of you got to remember these these are mental and physical athletes and they're at work. Right. Well, it's, and again, we you just said earlier, there's more access at this sport. I mean, than any other sport. Let's be honest. I, and, and and the drivers will give you their time. And I think NHRA does a really good job of, and, and all of our sponsors, like even uh, the John Force guys, they have dedicated times on like Saturday or whatever, whatever day it is to go to the, uh, you know, the AAA booth display yeah, or their whatever. Merch trailer. They, their merch trailer. They will all, there. if you cannot get a t in touch with your favorite driver at a drag race, you're just showing up five minutes before a round and then leaving you know five minutes before the round ends so you beat traffic that's it just come out there are and it, all you gotta do is go to nhra.com and there are, there's a schedule up there that will tell you when all of the autograph sessions are going to be going on if you don't know that you can go to the nitro alley stage and myself or hannah will be there and they'll tell you hey it's going to be you know the hot rod reunion cars are going to be down here we that's the whole point of that it's a hub of just saying hey where's this autograph session where's this one going to be and we try and do and, a lot of stuff there. So, And that leads me into the most accessible moment at an NHRA drag race, driver introductions. And again, this is an informational podcast here on Flow Racing, right off track. Driver introductions is limited to no one, right? <laughs> These guys and gals, that stage that you're looking at behind Jason, it's literally just like a 20-foot piece of cardboard that opens up. Drivers are behind it and fans can be all around it. You can walk up underneath the tower and see every single qualified driver. As a kid, I posted up at driver yeah. intros. I would just stand right under the tower, get a picture with and an autograph because I was still a kid in the 90s and we didn't do selfies um, with every single driver there. And I think that it's it becomes awareness, the track walk. You can go out there, walk the racetrack on Sunday morning before they even go on there. And there's usually a driver that that is there to ask questions. But you nailed it. Do your research, figure out where to be. But driver yeah. introductions, fans, if you are looking for your favorite driver, go to driver introductions. Get there early. They have to walk across the stage and through the fans and every single one of them. We don't have to. We have an hour before we race. Every single one of them takes the time to take pictures. That is the most friendly side of an NHRA race car driver. I feel like they've just woke up. They're feeling good. Everybody still has a chance to win the race. Right. I mean, it's 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 game time. Yeah, and they all have the majority of them have swag. You yep. know, they'll they'll bring stuff. They'll throw it out. You know, if and listen for being up there on that stage for so many years. If you're a cute little kid or you're you just like it's so happy to be there, you're gonna get you're stuff. gonna get something. Yeah, you don't have you know it's the curmudgeon that sits there like this. <laughs> throw me something, guy. You're not that funny. It's that guy who I I, I see him. I see you, and you're not getting anything ever ever but if you come and participate and have a good time the seal master track walk in phoenix this past year and i guarantee you uh this weekend oh my at band of everybody is going to be on that track the last race at this at this facility i went to the phoenix one yeah there were probably i mean literally if there were if, let's say ten thousand people in the stands uh, or in the facility there were 9500 people on that track and the other five people worked at, at the track. It was, I mean, it was out of control. And that's what that seal master, I mean, you can go to a, your favorite baseball game. You ain't running the bases before the game. No, you may, it might be special bat night and kids run the bases night, but you're not as an adult doing that. I mean, everybody, you know, they get up there, they walk past the, uh, the, the tree. Everybody's taking selfies with the tree. It's just, you get so much for your ticket and it's on you as a fan if you don't get there in time to do everything, or if you're just going to be that guy, I'm going to go sit in my seat. And I'm going to wait. I'm going to sit here. I don't need to do that. Okay. 
That's or if you don't wait till the end, the winner's circle, same thing. They pile the fans onto the racetrack. Right. And I have been in the car. If Erica or Aaron or TJ or somebody on my camp wins, I'm inside that truck. That is the coolest thing yeah. ever to just, you're parting, you're like Moses, parting the sea and going through this fan of people or this, this span of fans. And then you get there, they got to run through it. And the Alan Reinhardt's stage He's right the there stage, in the middle yeah. of the racetrack and the fans are just there. And while we're waiting, we're just exposed. I can't tell you, we have had conversations. Some of the coolest fan engagement is Erica standing there waiting for her time to go up on stage because yeah. they're happy. They just won the race. They ain't going to tell anybody. No, they're done working for the day. That's our Friday afternoon. Right. And there are places that you can be. So we're not, I didn't bring this up to yell at you fans. Although y'all yell at me, you scream at me while I'm eating. <laughs> they yell at me say, all day long. Go get your sister. We want them to meet you because we want you to come back. But there is a system to this and there are so many opportunities. So just, just ask, email, send them a Facebook message to John Force Racing, to Eric Enders Racing, to Antron Brown Racing. Their PR rep, their person who runs that, We'll let you know where their drivers are going to be. But there are so many places that you can meet these drivers. And, and this it, is. Yeah. And just use your head. These are people. <laughs> the, just because they drive a car 5,000 miles an hour and and you look up to them, use your head. Just don't go up there and just, hey, oh, I need this. Uh, be polite. Everyone just be polite. It's like, and if you come at me, hey, play, play this. Just hey, is there any way you could play this song for me? Or people come up. I hey, don't. I text you. I say play this now, or I'll kill you. Yeah, but that's you because, and you know, you and I have a special relationship. But Joe Schmo and uh, from uh, you know Cleveland, Ohio, who I ain't never met before, coming up yelling and screaming. Just, just be polite, man. That's all. I got feelings, but they're not very. They're not very. You know, you're never gonna get to me. But just relax. Just ask nicely. That's all. Let's talk Bandamere. You mentioned the track walk and what's going to happen. And I didn't really mean for this to be a full NHRA show. We don't stream the NHRA here on Flow Racing, but right. we do cover it. Um, the stars of the sport are very important to the content here on flowracing.com. But let's talk about what's going on this weekend. This is a big deal. We've had a lot of tracks closing down, um, a lot of negative feedback on it, but this one's a little different. So fans, Bandamere has been around for 65 years. John Bandemir is one of the coolest guys ever. His daughter actually sent me a picture of him with a backwards hat on working in the shop. And he's like, I'm bringing out my inner CE. And that was like a huge fan girl moment for me because John Bandemir is like one right. of the coolest people in the world. But they have done so much for this sport. They are, that is always one of the best tracks uh, surface wise because of the Traction Twin uh, boys who prepped that. Um, the family is a very kid oriented christian oriented fan oriented family and they have put on an incredible show for 65 years and this is going to be the last race for bandamere speedway at the facility in morrison colorado now they've come out and said that they want to find a piece of land elsewhere a lot of things happened during covid uh they fought with the county they fought with the city um they got in a little bit of trouble having events when they shouldn't, but they are a family of the people and they stood up for things that they believed that were right. And they have just, I, I can't remember the way that Tammy explained it to me, but it was incredible. She's it's just had run its course physically yeah. where it's at there. So a lot of people are another oh, tracks closing down, you know, drag racing is dying this and that general awareness here bandamir family is looking for somewhere else they do not plan on exiting this is just the next phase for them but with that being said houston raceway park atlanta english town all these big tracks that have these momentous moments and fan base are closing down but on the other side of that that stick it makes these races so special phoenix was incredible sell out yep. Houston, incredible. That was so emotional for me because that was my home track. But this is like my second home track. We've been racing here since the mid-90s, every single summer, my sister and I. And this one's going to be tough for me, but they're doing such a good job. And what do you think this weekend's going to be like? The vibe, is it going to be happy? Is it going to be sad? Are people going to be angry? What's what's going down? Uh, all I know is get there early. Just get, just get to the track early because the parking is always, I don't want to say always an issue there, but you're gonna you're gonna be waiting and and just have patience on the way out because you'll be waiting to get out as well it's that's always a fun track to get out of um <clears throat> excuse me um i think 
Listen, and, and on uh, Life's a Drag, we talk about this all the time. You know, th- everybody's like, oh, the sport's dying, the sport's dying. And I'm like, it's sport's not dying. No. Th- Listen, and by the way, if if you saw where Brandonware was 10 years ago and there were no houses anywhere near that track, and, and every year you go, oh, my God, those houses are getting closer and closer and closer <laughs> they and are. closer and closer. And you're like, this place ain't going to be here very much longer. And for I, mean, I don't know financially what they got, what was going on. But when somebody makes you an offer you it, that you can't refuse, you kind of got to take it. And it, it, it for the, the Bandemir family has been that pillar of the, the NHRA and drag racing for, like you said, 65 years. I, it wouldn't hurt my feelings if they just said, you know what, 65 years, that was a good run. I'm going to take the money and just kind of pocket it, and we're all good, generational wealth. But that's not the band of beers. They're, they're going to go out and try and figure it out. And, uh, you know, I think with uh, knowing that piece and that they, that they are the band of beers and they are, this, is, this just runs in their blood, they're going to go find a place. They're going to make it work. Yeah, we might not have this race for, you know, five, six years until they get the place built, but who knows? I mean, there's plenty of room by the airport. I wouldn't have to drive all the way across town. I could just land. Oh, well, it's all about there. you. Yeah, I could land, stay there, and just go to the airport. And I mean, because that airport's so freaking far. I mean, that thing might that airport might as well be in Utah. Yeah, I agree. It's not. It's not ideal. And I fly in Friday this week because I have a big girl job here at Flow Racing now. I fly in oh. Friday, so God forbid any delays. But with that yeah. being said, when you drive up to that facility, when you are coming from that airport in Utah. You can see it like a beacon in the night. Can you yeah. imagine being somebody who doesn't know what that is? And they're like, what in the hairy hell is that thing up there? Well, I, t- I tell people all the time, but they're like, where, where you, you race in Denver? I go, yeah, you know, you where Red Rocks is. I go, you know, where Red Rocks is the amphitheater. And they're like, I go, yeah, Sunday, bloody Sunday. Because that's, I, I'm a child of the eighties and you two is my favorite band. And I, I'll never forget Bono sing this with me. This is 40. I will sing, sing a new song at Red Rocks. He's blow. I mean, it was amazing. Seminal moment in my life. I wasn't there. Or memory, like, baby. Yeah. Memory. Oh, and, uh, but, but I tell people all the time, I'm like, Red Rocks is up the hill and Bandemir is right at the foot of it. And that's where we go race. And it's amazing. And like you said, though, no, coming from the hotel, you're like, there it is. There we go. And I, I immediately, as soon as I see it, I'm like, all right, I got to figure out where I'm going to park here and walk. So up you got it hills. on your podcast next week. Um, I don't know who you're going to have on as a guest, but I've got a ton of girls. You may come if you'd like, but I figured you would shut my invite down. We're going to no. do yoga. You've Sunrise done this before. yoga at Red Rocks Saturday yeah. before the race there. But you guys talk about what you eat when you're in certain cities, all this. This is a cool thing. And, and I hate waking up early, y'all. I hate waking up early. I'm a night owl. But I feel like with Bandemir going away, this may be one of the last times that I get to go experience this without getting a whole trip to Denver and watching the sunrise come up over the Red Rocks. You can sit on your, your mat. You don't have to freaking do downward dog or whatever the heck it is. You can just sit there and enjoy the experience. But it is one of the most incredible things ever and if you're coming to bandamere this weekend really look at what's around us we've got that town morris in there driving up just driving up driving back finding cute little places to eat at but that area i just want everybody to absorb it because it is the last time there and maybe i'm being sentimental i saw leah on her um instagram today she's been racing there since the mid 90s also with us taking that run up the hill that she always takes. And you could tell in her voice, like she was getting emotional. These racetracks mean something to us. It's not just a place for us to go do our work. They mean something. So if y'all are coming to Denver, absorb it. There's so many amazing things around it. Again, the first place I ever, you know, got to see anything. And I mean, I have unbelievable memories of that place. And I'm not, listen, I'm not Courtney Enders, who's been racing cars since she was five years old. I'm just (laughs) an idiot talking on a microphone. I don't get sentimental about anything. Like, listen, when we got rid of English Town, I was okay with that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, th- th- my attitude there and their attitude right back. Uh, I was like, oh, it was it, it would get confrontational. But I didn't grow up there. I don't have many right. memories there. The first time I went there, I think we were racing Super Comp in like two thousand nine. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. listen, I, yeah, every, every track. Listen, we're not the sport's not dying. The NHRA is working to find other tracks. Everybody, I mean, if you look at Twitter, any Twitter handle, everybody's like, hey, what about South Georgia Motorsport Park? Like, yeah. really? Okay. I mean, that's like everybody's trying to get that. You're going to have to build a bigger facility a little bit just to get stuff. But, you know, it's there's places out there. People are going to race. Um, 
you know, Joe Costello is trying to save uh, Palm Beach uh, International Raceway down in, in Florida, which is not going to save it. He tried his hardest, but uh, they're talking about building something else. So, you know, they, they, there's always going to there's a need for an outlet for this type of sport. Just so, you know, basically what Wally Park started this whole thing with, hey, we got to get you idiots off the street and put you on a racetrack so you don't kill each other. So and now it's evolved a, to, to craziness. Yeah. We've been talking about NHRA this whole time, but there are so many other places you can race. And I'm going to plug it here because that's what we do. But Flow Racing kind of is the pillar for the other half of the racing world. We've got the PDRA. We've got the Duck Series. We've got um, NMCA, NMRA, Funny Car Chaos, um, Midwest Drag Racing Series. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And if you're a drag racing fan and you've got tunnel vision of just one side of this thing, it is insane the amount of drag racing that goes on yeah. in the country and the amount of facilities. And so just to reiterate before we move on to something um, a little more fun before we wrap this up, um, drag racing is not dead by any means. We may be getting a little more spread out and people are finding their way within it. But I, this sport to me is just this year, the past two years, even post COVID, we were one of the first ones to go back to work, to yeah. go back to traveling and if you can't see that we have grown and are continuing to grow, our drivers are getting younger. We were kind of in this space where it was the old man's club. And if you didn't know John Force and you didn't know drag racing, but we've got young people coming in and taking over. Justin Ashley, my God, second generation racer coming in, just crushing it. The McGay Hayes, they are now a I third generation kid. racer. Like this, if you open your eyes and really look past who they're telling you to watch and the important people in this, Good God. I mean, it's young and it's fresh and it's hot. Yeah. And uh, listen, it, it, no sport has a perfect record. You know, there's there's warts in everything. NFL, baseball, every, it, and everybody has an opinion on how to fix it. it. Believe me, there's smart people trying to fix it and try to make things to the most perfect thing that they can make it. And uh, you just got to have patience. Listen, it, it's it's. If I knew how to do it, I mean, everybody has their, I, my opinion of it, of, of one thing is, what do you know? Okay. Well, you're just coming at it from this side. There's smart people that have worked in other motorsports that work here and uh, try and figure this out. So just say, gosh, dang, Tony Stewart has chosen drag racing to be his new home. By the way, the, the, the fact that Tony Stewart even knows who I am. Like you, you fangirl. I know. Over. I still, gr I still fangirl out when he says. That. I, I, I told him. I, I, I he goes, "Hey man, I love what you do. You're great." And I'm like, "What did you just say to me?" <laughs> I go, "You are Tony Stewart. You're not allowed to talk to me like that." I won't lie. Every time I do one of these, like Antron coming on, I've known Antron my whole life. Like right. I used to wait for his autograph, but when he came on my podcast the other day and he called me Court, I don't know why that got to me, <laughs> but I was like, "Oh my god, we're boys." He called me right. Court. Yeah. Like what oh, the he heck? Dude, he comes up to me because uh, I DJ Tommy DeLago's wedding uh, and, and Antron was the officiant every time. Jason, what are we going to do? You're going to DJ and I'm going to so cool. marry him. This is what we're going to do. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, there we go, Antron. I love you. You're the best. I've been on this side of the ropes for 18 years now and I still, but that just, my fan heart will never die. And that's why I wanted to bring up those issues that we just talked about. And I don't know if Jason Logan's the most serious guy in the sport, but you've got, you've got your, your head wrapped around what we do because you just watch us all day. So we wanted to bring that up, kind of educate you guys a little, don't get mad at the, at the guys and gals for working because that's what they're doing. If you want to get them, figure out when they're going to be out at their pits find a Courtney Anders of the pit. Ted Yerzik is that for um, Antron, you know, Sarah Slaughter is that for Brittany, just find somebody wearing a polo and maybe say, Hey, what's the best time to catch them. So get to driver intro, get to the winner's circle, all that jazz. But I want to end this on a fun note. And yeah. I hope that, I hope that everybody took that what we said um, as that little educational piece. But then again, we're just Courtney Anders and Jason Logan. What do we, we don't know nothing. So before we get into one of my favorite things to talk to Jason Logan about travel woes, I want to remind everybody that this episode and every episode of Right Off Track is brought to you by Castrol Edge, which I love Castrol because when I this is not a part of my ad read, but when I was a child um, and a fan of John Force, he was Mr. Castrol. So when I got approached to do this for Castrol, like fangirl out again uh but castrol edge three times stronger against viscosity breakdown than the leading full synthetic and gives your engine 10 times better high temperature performance than the industry standard when you need it most castrol edge better oil for maximum performance 
You no. know what one of, the, one of the coolest things I saw at NASCAR all, se- all season has been? What? At the throwback race, whatever, where were that, Martinsville or wherever that was, they had they had a uh, Castrol, Motor Oil, John Force car out there. It was very Dude. cool. I was, and, the, and the announcers kept going, hey, look at that John Force paint scheme on that uh, on that Austin Dillon. Dude, and John Force hasn't ball. been Castrol in years. He's been peak forever, but there is yeah. something. It's like the number three with Dale Earnhardt. Like, yeah. John Force is Castrol. I still have yep. his hat in my bedroom that he, I was eight years old, took it off of his head and put it on my head, and it has his greasy fingerprints on it. Still have it. To this see, day. And that, see, that's fan stuff. By the way, going back to the uh, finding a, a PR rep or somebody to say something to, my mom loves Brittany Force. Like, she's just now starting to get into this because, I, hey, I don't see you out there at the at the racing track. And I go, Mom, here's NHRA.tv, and here's where, you know, you can see and hear me all all weekend. Just so I put NHRA.tv on her, on her uh, TV. And she goes, hey, I need an autograph from Brittany Force. So I saw Brittany in Gainesville. I go, Brittany, my mom loves you. She thinks you're the greatest. She goes, oh, let's take a selfie. I take a selfie with her. And that was conversation number five in Gainesville. Uh, <laughs> I have with Brittany. But I'm like, I go, hey, I need, I, I told Sarah, I go, hey, I need an autograph from Brittany. She was go ask her. And I go, I'm not going in there no, I'm asking scared. her. Yeah, I go, I need to find a hat and let her sign the hat, so. But yeah, I find the PR people too. So anyways, you got to, you just got to, again, not the people in the cruise shirts, find the people in the polos. And they're usually a a decent looking chick, except for Ted (laughs) Yersick. Or Elon Werner. Or Elon Werner, which he's everybody's (laughs) PR person. Um, You and I, and we are, I'm I'm going to go a little over on the show, but I like to hang out with you. You and I, this is where we're going to get to get real. We have a group text called Travel Woes. This started... Many moons ago, this started pre-COVID where you and I would just bitch about nonstop. Nonstop. And this this may get a little little negative here, but we spend our life on the road. We spend our life in security lines, on airports, in rental car buses, in hotels. Like those of you who don't travel for a living, I don't think understand that. Yes, it's a luxury, but my God, there is a system to this stuff. And we're going to go off on a tangent here. It's not about fun. travel woes. It's not a fun thing. And I get so mad. I just texted Erica this morning. I wish y'all had a spot for me on the private plane. They never have a spot for me. And I have to fly a commercial. And I know the, that sounds the way that it sounds. But guys, every Thursday through every Monday, we're having to do this. And it gets old. So Jason Logan, let's talk some travel woes. Let's I want to know. I want to know. Your least favorite part of the airport experience from head to least head. least favorite part for me, and uh, it's waiting at the gate to get on the plane. Now, here's where the, this is going to sound totally bad, but I mean every word of it. <laughs> In America, well, let's go back. In India, there's a caste system, and the people with the dots on their head. Oh, Jesus you know, Christ. so the different colors mean you're different, higher up level on the the caste system. So whatever color that is, you you know, you're so there, right. there's a I'm better than you. And then you are the worst person ever down here. So in airline f- travel, there is a caste system. I fly American. There's executive platinum. Oh, wait, there's concierge key. Concierge there's executive, key. executive platinum, platinum pro, platinum, and then gold. Actually, yeah, gold's fourth or fifth. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah, fourth because concierge key just goes on. Due to co- I was platinum pro for a long time, and I was third boarding group. Now I'm gold because of COVID. Okay, fine. At least I'm. Yeah, I know. I'm, uh, Courtney, you're better than me. Yeah, you're better than me. That's just the way it goes. Executive platinum's better than me. But and guess me. what? I'm better than the regular people in, in boarding group five through nine because I'm gold, according to the airline. But when the when the people like and I and man, I am so I will bird dog you. I'll be like, you hold your ticket you're like this. You're like, I'll look. I go, bitch, you're boarding group seven. Back to the bus. Back it up. Back it up. I'm boarding group four, and I'm getting on this plane before you, whether you like it or not. To the point where sometimes I will go into the tail end of uh, they haven't called group four yet, and I'll slide right in behind group three. And oh yeah, that's how you gotta three. do it. I wait till I wait till there's like three people left of group two. And just go. See, that's good. But see, and, and that's the to me is the worst part of just getting on the plane because and, and, and the boarding process is annoying because you know you're in group nine. That bag ain't fitting up in anywhere. That it's not going to fit up in any of the bins. 
And then the person in group nine, oh, I'm all the way back. Or they're in C, they wanted to wait till the very end. They're, you know, 11C or whatever. But there's only room in like 20 something for their bag. So they put their bag back there. And then as soon as they land, they're fighting their way to get back to their bag. And then they get their bag and they fight their way back to get, no, 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 no. You wait. Oh, that drives me bananas. Do you know what drives me bananas? What? When you're boarding. So I like, I like 8C. 8C, if I'm not first class, 8C is my jam. Some people hate on the bulkhead. Don't really care. I like the bulkhead because I don't like my shit underneath the seat. I want right. to put even my small backpack up there. So I'm boarding group 2.9, as I called it. And I make sure that that's it. But I sit in the bulkhead and I watch people come in every single boarding group all the way to the end. <laughs> And there's one every about 10 people who tries to put their bag in the first class bin. Yep. Nope. It doesn't matter if that first class bin is bone dry empty. You don't get to put your bag up there. And I nope. try so hard, especially when I'm going to a race, because I only have this much anger and I don't need to fill my cup. Of, my cup right. needeth right. runneth over on right. day one. And I try to just sit there and, you know, maybe the flight attendant will alert them. But there's been a few times where I've carried up and I've gone, can't put that there. And it's like I am just Hitler or something because yeah. there is a rule. And this is the theme of this show is teaching etiquette. And I don't know who I think I am or you are to teach You're etiquette. You're smart. You're smart. There should be some sort of pamphlet, if you will, that you get when you get on. Or you get your ticket and they send you an email and here's the way that the world works. Okay. Right. There's, there's bullet points. There's don't stand on the left side of the little tram. Don't right. put your bag over here. You know, get to the back of the elevator. Don't bump the person on the aisle. Whenever you're boarding, only put your bag where it's supposed to be. <laughs> don't crowd the gate. There should be this test. It goes back to the entitlement thing. People feel that they're entitled. I spent all this money for this plane ticket. This is the one trip I'm taking this year. I spent, I yeah. saved all this money. I, listen, well, guess what? The, this is my office. I do this every Thursday. Right. This is my office and I've come here to work. And they they do that. In, it's again, living in Orlando, it's screaming mm. kids, you know, parents about ready to just kill each other that they are getting ready to spend $15,000 for a week, a week long trip of just not sleeping, kids yelling and screaming. You know, it's craziness, but it's entitlement. That's all it is. And it's it's fun to watch people in first class it act. It is fun it's to watch. Best. And and I act that way when I'm up there. Of I'm course. Pinky out. I want I'm everybody to know I'm there. Listen, I'm I, I when I was platinum pro, I was uh I was 9C. I'm a 9C guy cuz I wanted to put my I'll either put my bag up underneath it or I definitely will just throw it up on top. But but I don't like the the way the seat is uh, in a bulkhead there's no uh i i need to man i need to man spread a little bit just a tad bit <laughs> you know, okay with that lift. being said what is your what is the etiquette when you're man spreading if you are what's the armrest etiquette here? all right so here i saw this the couple you know you know who samantha brown is she used to have a travel show on the travel channel like when it first yeah. came out she traveled all over the world does whatever but she had the perfect thing i saw it on tiktok the other day so here's the way on an hour work or a, a row works. And if, if you don't believe this, this is your problem. And this, you should really never fly. The person who sits on the window gets control of the window up, down, whatever. The other two whatever people, they, want. they, if they want the sun to blast in their face the entire time, you just got to deal with that. The person on the aisle gets, to, gets to control whoever goes in and out of the aisle. So mm -hmm. if you're on the aisle, you and I, we are aisle people. If we're sleeping, guess what? Good luck. I ain't, wake shit. me up. See if that happens. See how well that goes over. The person in the, in the middle seat gets to have both armrests. Both armrests. They can have both armrests. That's their deal. That I have acquiesced that just so I can give you uh, permission to get in and out. That's to me is how the aisle that that the row works. I could what, not agree more. And there's a there, we all feel for you in the middle. We've all been yeah. there. We feel for been you. There. And I want you to not have to be like this. And I've yeah. seen it again. So this is just an informational piece. Window, aisle. Or window, you get the the shade. The window. You get yeah. that window armrest. Or you can lay your up. head up against the wall. Yeah. Yep. And aisle gets the other side. Yeah. Simple. Part what, of the pamphlet. What drives me even more bananas, and this happened going from Charlotte to Bristol, uh, when someone sits in your seat and they act like it's their seat. 
Uh, I almost lost my mind because uh, he's on one of those little puddle jumpers, the one and two seats. Uh, and I, w- I was on the aisle and Brian Loans was sitting on the uh, in the one seat. And I was going to talk to Brian. This guy's sitting in my seat. He goes, oh, just switch. oh, yeah. He, he goes, oh, I, I, I thought this was my seat. Yeah, it's not. The A is on the window, C is on the aisle. Oh, and then they want to switch with you. Yeah, then then they didn't. He didn't move. I'm like, I go, I go, I guess I'll sit on the window. It was a 30 minute flight, but I that just drives. Pay attention, just look, and and don't bother people. Don't bring food on an airplane either. I I don't (laughs) care how taking a turn, and I love it. I don't care how far that flight is. Eat before you get there. Plan your day a little long. Like my, my trip to uh, Denver. So I got to go to Charlotte, then go to Denver. My flight's at 1031 in the morning. I, I, I have TSA pre-check. I know how it will take me from the moment I get dropped off to get to the gate will take me all of about 15 minutes. That, that's what's going to, it's going to take. Now I have pre-check. You don't have pre-check. You don't have clear. You don't have anything else. You better show up two hours ahead of time in Orlando just because and, and, and the people that oh, oh my god, they're sweating. They're like, oh, what are we gonna do? Kids are screaming, yelling, trying to fold a stroller. Man, you got a plan. I don't travel with my family anywhere just because I got to worry about uh, ba- extra bags and not understanding how the uh, the Admirals Club works. Come on, man. Just I feel like there should your- be an HOV lane at airports for for high frequent travelers. One thousand percent. Listen, Courtney, this, we could go all day. We, could we go, could. Put, I know. I was your, just going to say, I've got two minutes left on this podcast. We could go all day on this. And I didn't really No, I knew I was going to say I didn't know this would turn into a tangent podcast, but it did. And I love it because that's who we are in this sport. Another thing, too, guys, don't wear flip flops on planes. Oh, I had that on here. I had feet, but I didn't feel like we had time to go into it. Yeah, don't wear <laughs> flip flops on planes, guys. Just put some shoes on and deal with it. There's this great new invention called Hey Dudes. They're just like wearing flip-flops. So before we wrap this up, I want to get, we're going to actually talk nuts and bolts here for a second. Okay. The four pro categories. We're going to yes. take a piece out of shake and bake world. Who are your pick to be king and or queens of the mountain this weekend? This is just off the top of my head. Yeah, no thought to it. I didn't tell him we were doing this. Uh, Man, I want to say this person in pro stock motorcycle, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think, well, I think Matt Smith might have a good shot here. At this oh, week, okay. this weekend, it's either going to be Matt or uh, Gage Herrera. Um, it's hard to bet against Gage right now. Yeah, that's why I was, was going to say that it's easy picking. Um, pro stock, I want to say your girl. I mean, I'm always in her corner. You I are. Think, it, and and I she's, think she, she's kind of a track closing down broad this year. Right. That's what <laughs> I was going to say. So I'm going to say Erica just because you're here and I don't want to upset Erica. Um, she but although although TJ said it's his birthday this week, so I don't know. TJ's no joke. Aaron's no joke. I almost said Derek Kramer the other night because this is their hometown and they understand uh, this air see? more than anything in the world. By the way, Pro Stock is on fire. Let's fire. rip them off. I mean, Aaron, TJ, Erica. Then you got and and, and uh, Jerry Don is Dallas. You got Derek Kramer. You got Matt Hartford. Every Dude, it's that, that's what this every, is supposed yeah. to be. Yes, All right, it's funny so card. good. Funny car. Um, Matt Hagen. Okay. I'm going to say Matt Hagen because it's Mopar and he likes to show up for Mopar events. He does. Um, Top Fuel. I mean, let's just, this is a shot in the dark. It's not going to be Leah. It's not going to be, man, I want to say Justin Ashley. That's who I picked last night. Yeah, Justin Ashley. All right. You heard it here first. Jason Logan knows everything because he stands there like a fan on the side and watches every single pass. Joe Costello says I have the best seat in the house and I bitch and moan that I have that best seat in the house because I'm right there on the starting line. I'm like, dude, well, you don't, up, Topeka, you don't, there, there's issues with it, yeah, but that's issues. a whole nother episode. So I'm feeling like we got to know Jason Logan today. We let all of our emotions out. We got mad. We got sad. We got happy. We talked Bandamere. We did all the things. I want to know, would you come back on as a co-host when we have some guests later on this year to give you our side yeah. of this or does that does that kind of conflict of interest with life uh, i don't know life life of drag is a different thing you know just a bit hey it just depends courtney whatever you want i do what you want me to do you do you tell me so, what to do because sometimes i feel like 
I love this show. Um, I'm getting my feet wet. I'm not really used to being a host on a podcast. I'm used to being a guest. And so I've had all these highfalutin guests on here and I like it, but sometimes it's just nice to have somebody else to have a different side of you or bounce some different ideas around. So flowracing.com, you are going to see this mug again. We're going to get him a different background next time. Not because we don't love Brittany Forrest, but because it may be me and him. I could put uh, yeah, listen, whatever background you need me to do. I can oh, no, that way I wasn't complaining. I just meant we might, I want to reenact and do our own little one. So well, I appreciate I you it. coming on the show, Jason. I know you've got stuff to do today. Um, I will see you very shortly at Bandamere Speedway for hopefully what is one of the most emotional, incredible events of the season. Uh, it's going to be epic. Last day on the mountain. It's going to be epic. T- take these things with you. Be nice. Use your head. Get there early. Those three things make things happen. And stay late. Don't leave at and the stay last late. song. There's of a fireworks. Concert. There's fireworks Friday and Saturday night. Amazing. And if you see Jason Logan there, ask him for his autograph. It doesn't make him feel <laughs> uncomfortable at all. Again, thank you so much for being on here. Thank you so much for watching Flow Racing, Flowverse, as I call it. I actually will be back next week. I usually do this every other week, but we took a week off for 4th of July, and I will be back next week to talk PDRA Pro Stars, and I'm going to announce it now. Johnny Placino is going to be the guest on next week's episode, so we all know he has all the things to say, so you're not going to want to miss it, but thanks for tuning in. This has been Right Off Track with Jason Logan and your girl CE. We'll see you next week.